So today, uh, I would like to present the uh, OpenStack Orchestrate uh, service chain. And my name is Suhun Yuen from Menishi. Then I'm working for the VTN project in OpenDaylight. And hopefully so uh, everybody can learn something uh, from this session and then uh, we are open for the uh, other people to join this uh, VTM project and then also want to uh, work with uh, other projects in open direct communities. Uh, in this uh, presentation, uh, there will be the two uh, parts. Uh, the first one is a, a virtual tenant network in open direct. So first of all, I would like to uh, provide the overview of the virtual tenant network uh, using the VTM models. Then uh, I would like to discuss the, how the uh, service chain will be uh, um, performed in the uh, open daylight with the VTN. Then uh, integration with OpenStack will be presented. Then in the second uh, part of the this session, uh, the, the Thai sitting here will show you the more detail uh, with the demonstration, right? Then uh, let me start with uh, what the uh, you know, virtual tenant network and then how it works with the service chain. So VTN project is uh, uh, you know, uh, the first project when we established the open direct communities uh, in two years ago. Then basically uh, it has a two component uh, in the, uh, one is a VTN manager, uh, which is a part of the uh, uh, open daylight uh, base controller. Then uh, it uh, enables a multi-tenancy in the network and also uh, provides the end-to-end -end, uh, pass controls. Then this VTN manager will talk with a VTN coordinator, uh, which is an application on top of the uh, S uh, open daylight controller. Then uh, VTN coordinator provides the uh, Northbound API to the application. And also, uh, it uh, maps the VTM model to the open uh, um, APIs. And it also provides the control, the multiple uh, SDN controller capabilities. So VTN itself has uh, so many uh, rich functionality, but uh, today I would like to focus on the uh, service chain and an open stack part. Then if you are interested in more about the VTN, uh, all the information will be available in a, a VTN project in the uh, Open Data Right Week site. And then please uh, you know, uh, contact us uh, if you are interested in more detail. Then uh, many people already saw this uh, diagram from the uh, lithium release. And then uh, VTN project has been participated in, in from the first release, Helium, uh, and then hydrogen, and then lithiums. Then uh, you can see on the top side uh, in the network application and VTN coordinator sit on the, uh, you know, the top layer uh, next to the open stack neutrons. Then uh, you can see the uh, in VTN manager, uh, which is a part of the network service. So today we have uh, so many active projects in the open day, right? So it might be uh, very difficult to find a VTM manager, but that it's in the, uh, sit in the, the core uh, day, right, uh, controllers. Then in this uh, lithium release, uh, VTM project work to the, the switch the, uh, from AD cell to the MD cell, and also uh, work with uh, uh, OpenStack uh, Neutron, and then, uh, OBS DB and then open flow uh, in the southbound protocols. And by working uh, together such component, it will provide the open flow based uh, service chain uh, use cases. Uh, it will be that demonstrated later in this presentation. Then uh, let me tell you more about some VTN. So first of all, so VTN uh, provides a, a merge tenant and traffic isolation and, uh, and provides an abstraction of the physical networks. So first of all, the VTN um, will discover the, all the uh, physical uh, topologies in the data plane uh, using open flow uh, with LLDPs. Then uh, such a switching resource will be uh, logicalized in the SDN controller and then uh, open to the uh, users and application uh, to define and create the uh, abstracted logical networks. So in this uh, slide, uh, there are two VTNs are defined. And first VTN uh, has a server A to server B, 
uh, with uh, uh, one optimizer and firewall and load balancers. In the VTN2, uh, it was defined in server C to server D with DDoS uh, appliance and then firewalls. Then, uh, and you can see some several uh, VTM model uh, in this diagram uh, that in the next page uh, as defined. So this is a list of the VTM models uh, from the VTN uh, project. So first VTN, uh, which is a logical representation of the uh, virtual networks. Then, if you want to define the layer two network, uh, you can use the VBridge uh, for such representations. And also, VRouter uh, provides you the layer three routing capability as a logical uh, entities. And then, also, if you want to define the virtual uh, uh, tunneling capabilities, you can use a VTunnel and also VTAP uh, as an endpoint. And also, the, uh, you can bypass some network uh, by using the VBurpass. And then finally, the interface uh, is the end point of the uh, uh, node. So it can be representing the virtual machine, the container, or servers, and then all the uh, host in the networks. Then uh, by using and then combining the, these all the component, uh, you can define uh, your own uh, logical networks. Then back to the previous slide, you can see in the VTN number one, uh, in addition to the uh, such uh, network appliance or services, uh, you can see the uh, layer three, the virtual uh, routers in the middle, and also the bridge uh, in the uh, VTN1, and also uh, VTN2. Then uh, this is uh, completely up to you what kind of the uh, virtual network you want to create. Then you can use these components to define the, uh, to satisfy your requirement. So this is a VTN's flexibility uh, to the users uh, for to de define some logical networks. And then it completely hides the complexity of the physical uh, topologies. And also these uh, two tenants are completely isolated each other. Right? So that's the uh, definition of the VTN. Then uh, after you define the network, now it's time to uh, program the network. Then in order to uh, define such uh, actions, uh, there's a two step. First, uh, you define the matching condition uh, using the 12 tuples. So from layer one uh, physical port to layer two and layer three, and then all as well as layer four uh, logical port numbers. Then uh, combining these 12 tuples, uh, you can define the matching condition. Then uh, define the, uh, your intent or action, uh, well, how to uh, you know, uh, manage uh, your uh, packet. Then this combination of the uh, matching condition and the action can be applied to the VTN, or if you want to uh, apply such a policy only to the certain uh, layer two domain, you can apply such policy to the uh, virtual bridge. Then in this example, the if the traffic come to the VTN, and you can define the uh, matching condition action as a forward uh, to the destinations. Or you can drop the packet uh, for the uh, ACL purpose. Otherwise, you can mark that uh, packet for the QoS case, and then finally, yeah, you can direct to the uh, certain uh, network services uh, for the service uh, chain use cases. So by uh, combining these actions, uh, you can uh, program your uh, you know, definition of the network behaviors uh, with your uh, policies, right? Then uh, let me tell you more a little bit about the uh, 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 traffic redirections. Then if you have some intent to redirect a certain traffic, uh, you can define the uh, VTN mod configuration uh, as in right side. The first, uh, you define the VTN tenant one, and then uh, you can define them, uh, this is a layer two domain, so you can define them VBridge. Then uh, you can define the flow uh, filter uh, in one direction, and also you can uh, specify the sequence number for the priorities. Then uh, define uh, flow list as a, and then action as a direct to the uh, V terminal interface one. So this configuration uh, can be uh, done in using the CLI or REST API, and then uh, hopefully the GUI in the sometime in the near futures. Then uh, this uh, configuration can be visualized uh, as in the, uh, the bottom side of the uh, you know, uh, user interface. 
So from server A to server B, and then that is a, a layer two uh, domain, so which is connected to the uh, virtual bridge. Then if some certain flow uh, only go to the uh, virtual terminal one, and which is an, uh, physically the server C. So uh, this uh, policy can be uh, implemented to the, on top of the VTN and other applications. Then using these uh, capabilities, uh, we can uh, enable the service chain uh, on the VTN. And back to the, the same uh, example of the uh, network topologies. Then if you have some, uh, this red flow uh, going through the uh, one optimizer, uh, firewall, and then load balancers. Then otherwise, you can define uh, like a, a blue flow only go to the firewalls. And also the, uh, in the VTN2, uh, another green flow uh, go to the DDoS appliance and firewall, then finally go to the destinations. So by combining the, your matching condition and then policies, uh, you can define your own uh, service chain policies, and then you can apply that, uh, such policy on the logical network views. Then again, uh, obviously you don't need to uh, configure the every single switch in the network to do this. Uh, this is uh, one of the benefits of the SDN controller uh, with VTNs. Then uh, let me tell you about then how the uh, integration with OpenStack is done here. And uh, this uh, picture shows uh, uh, OpenStack and then uh, open the right architectures. And you can see the open uh, stack site. Uh, we have a Neutron and then ML2 plugins, and which is connected to the Neutron interface in the open the right controllers. So this is already existing uh, the component in the open day right. Then we added the VTN manager uh, to talk with the uh, 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 neutron interface. Then also the uh, VTN manager work with the VTN coordinator, uh, which will be the connected to the application uh, through the uh, REST APIs. Uh, application can be the uh, uh, graphical user interface or service chain policies. Then uh, these uh, two, uh, Neutron interface and VTN coordinators uh, work with a VTN manager. Then a VTN manager will uh, configure the, all the open flow switch in the network uh, using the open flow uh, protocol plugin in the southbound and as well as the OBS DBs. Right. Then uh, let me show you some step by step uh, how the OpenStack integration uh, is done here. And first of all, so user can have some uh, uh, wants to deploy the virtual machine uh, firewall uh, in the network. In this case, the neutron dashboard user uh, configures, uh, deploys, uh, uh, creates a, a new virtual machines. Then uh, such information uh, come to the uh, VTN managers uh, through the uh, ML2 plugin and then a neutron interface. Then uh, uh, in meanwhile, the OpenStack will create a virtual machine in the networks. Then this creation also go to the uh, VTN manager from the southbound side. Then by having this information, uh, VTN manager can map the OpenStack uh, component to the VTN models. For example, the uh, network in the OpenStack can be mapped to the VTN. And also the subnet can be mapped to the VBridge and port uh, go, can uh, map to the interface. So this mapping can be done automatically in the VTN uh, manager site. So uh, by uh, doing this, then uh, this newly created uh, virtual machine uh, can be ready to provide the services. Then now you can define your um, uh, service chain policies. And for example, uh, if you want to uh, redirect the flow XYZ to this uh, newly created firewall, then such request uh, go to the uh, VTN manager uh, through the VTN coordinators. And then uh, in this VTN manager, it will create a, a matching condition and then uh, action uh, for in this request. So flow X, Y, Z uh, will be the defined to redirect to the firewall. So this uh, creation will be automatically distributed to the all the switches in the networks using open flow protocols, right? Then a uh, switch can have their own uh, uh, such matching condition and action in the flow entries. 
Then once you have a such uh, traffic to the switch, it will check the matching condition. Then if it uh, uh, hits the request, then it will be redirect to the firewall. Then back to the switch and then uh, forward it to the final destinations. So this is kind of the overview of the how the uh, OpenStack uh, based uh, virtual machine can be used as a, a service uh, function in the network and how we can uh, redirect such a traffic to the um, uh, such uh, service chain use cases, right? Then uh, once again, so uh, this uh, OpenStack based uh, service chain uh, is completely open flow based solution. Uh, which is uh, different from the other project in the open daylight community. And then a specific uh, you know, use case using the VTN project, okay? So now uh, this is overview and then uh, let me switch to the uh, type for the uh, more uh, specific demo uh, features. Hi, I'm Hideyuki Tai from NEC. I'm, an, I'm a contributor to Open Daylight project, especially for VTN project and NIC NYC intent project. Today, I would like to show you how service function chaining works on these VTN features. So, okay, this slide, this slide shows the VTN features which I would like to highlight in this demonstration. The first point is the seamless integration with OpenStack. As he explained, so VTN manager supports OpenStack integration. It means that you don't need to manually define virtual network when you are using OpenStack. So once you create a logical network in OpenStack, VTN manager receives this information and automatically created virtual bridge, and based on this virtual bridge information, VTN manager automatically install flow entries into OpenFlow switch you deploy. Okay, so the second point is the ability to insert service functions dynamically. So VTN manager provides a way to kind of intent-based policy, so you can easily change the network policy and insert service functions dynamically. Third point is to do this thing, VTN feature does not require NSH capability. It means that you don't need to buy NSH capability and deploy your environment. VTN feature just work with open flow switches. The fourth point is the ability to visualize to visualize end-to-end -end flows. So not just listing flow entries in each switch, VTN manager can list end-to-end -end flows from host to host. So I will show you how VTN feature list, how VTN feature visualize end-to-end -end flows the later of this demonstration. Okay, so this slide shows the overview of this demonstration. So the lower half of this slide sh shows the physical equipment. On this demonstration, on this demonstration, uh, okay, on this demonstration, I deployed three OpenStack nodes and running five, five VM instances including two service function VMs. So in this demonstration, to make it clearly obvious, I, this service function just insert 200 milliseconds delay when this guy forwards packets. So I'm, it means that, so when the packet go through this sub, service function VMs, the traffic is added 200 milliseconds delay. So you can easily see when the packet goes through this service function chain, service function VMs. And uh, in the demonstration, I 
these OpenStack nodes are connected with OpenFlow switches. I've deployed 10 OpenFlow switches, open switches in there. So this is a little, a little bit complicated, but you don't need to manage, you don't need to understand this a little bit complicated network because these open flow switches, all switches are controlled by VTN manager running in open delight controller. So what you have to what you need to do is just define virtual network virtual network via API of VTN VTN manager. So the upper half of this slide shows a virtual network, which I will define in this demonstration. At this time, there is one virtual bridge, and host one, host two, and host three running in OpenStack nodes are connected with this virtual bridge. It means that packets from these hosts are forwarded like like there is a normal layer to switch. So, and okay, so VTN manager is seamlessly integrated with OpenStack. So when I, when I created a logical network in OpenStack, this virtual bridge configuration is automatically created by VTN manager. So, anyway, so, there is a virtual, since there is a virtual bridge, packets from host one to host three is forwarded like this. Yeah, actually, so receiving this configuration, VTN manager automatically install flow entries like this. So packets go through these <laughs> switches. In the demonstration, so to insert service functions, first I needed to create a virtual terminals for service functions like this. So this it means that register service functions with VTN manager. Uh, VTN manager. So I mean, so and in this scenario, I don't want packets to be forwarded to these service functions without I explicitly configure service function chaining. So these virtual terminals are not connected with the virtual bridge. So it means that at this time, the packets from this host does not reach to this service function chaining. But we have virtual terminals. It means that we are ready to insert service function dynamically to this traffic. Okay, so at this point, I configure traffic redirection. To do that, I need to specify the target traffic and we need to define a service function chain. So as the target traffic, in this demo, I use source, source IP address and destination IP address. As a source IP address, I will specify host one's IP address, and as a des destination IP address, I'm specifying the host three's IP address. And to insert a service function one to this traffic, uh, later in the script, I specify the service function one. So, in the point of view of a virtual network, the packet should be forwarded like this. And receiving this configuration, VTN manager running in open delight controller automatically send open flow messages and try to install, try to update flow entries into these switches. So packets from host one is really forwarded to service function one and to host three. So at this time, here, this service function guy adding 200 milliseconds delay, so we can see 
we can see the communication from host one to host three is really go through this service, service function. Okay, this slide explains software component in this demonstration. So in this demo, I'm, I'm using Open Daylight Lithium and installing, I'm installing these two features in Calaf console. Also, I'm using VTN coordinator, which is also contained in Lithium release. And I'm using GUI, GUI of a VTN coordinator. And also, I'm using, using OpenStack Juno version. And this slide shows how I deploy these software components. So as I explained, there are three OpenStack nodes. And in OpenStack control nodes, there are Neutron component and ML2 plugin for Open Daylight. And uh, yeah, in the demo, I just, I just using the GUI of OpenStack node of OpenStack to change the OpenStack configuration. And also, I'm using scripts to call REST API of VTN to change virtual network configuration to insert service function dynamically. OK, so demonstration part. Actually, I've recorded the demonstration, so let me start the video. So this is the OpenStack GUI, and first, I'm cre I created the I'm, I created a logical network and launched VM instances on this network. Uh, this operation is really normal operation, nothing, nothing special. So here I'm just specifying the allocation pools of IP address for this network. And the configuration is done and a logical network is created on OpenStack. After that, on this logical network, I'm launched VM instances, five VM instances. This operation is also normal operation on OpenStack GUI, nothing special. So I just skip it because there are same operation. Okay, at this point, I have five instances, five VM instances, and two of them are service function VMs, which insert just 200 milliseconds delay. OK, and now I tried to send packets from host one to host three. At this time, we've, I didn't configure service function chaining, so packets are forwarded like this without, without any big delays. There are just like few milliseconds delay. So since VTN manager is seamlessly integrated with OpenStack, so yeah, here I just, just creating a logical network on OpenStack GUI, but actually this information, VTN manager gets this information and based on this information, automatically created flow entries, automatically install flow entries into OpenFlow switch, so these packets are forwarded based on flow entries. Okay, also I opened host tools console and again tried to send pin packets from host two and host three. And it also worked. Okay.
And now I'm showing the GUI of VTN. So here, this GUI, GUI shows virtual network configuration. So at this time, there is one virtual bridge which is automatic, automatically created. And also, and also this virtual bridge have several virtual interfaces. Each virtual interface is associated with virtual host, virtual, virtual instance, which I launched in OpenStack nodes. So VTN manager has this kind of information. So VTN manager know which, to which port packet forwarded. Okay, for example, this shows the information about a particular interface of a virtual bridge. And there is the information about there is information about switch ID and port ID for the virtual machine instance, which I launched in OpenStack GUI. And also this VTN, VTN GUI can show physical network topology like this. This is this is a physical this is a physical topology which open daylight controller detects this GUI, this GUI just gets this top network topology information from open daylight controller and just sh not just showing a physical topology so VTN manager has a capability to list end to end flows and this GUI visualizes this information. For example, among the list of end-to-end -end flows, I specify, I choose, I choose the end-to-end -end flow from host one to host three. And these blue, blue lines shows which switches this traffic go through. And at this time, I didn't yet configure service function chaining policy, so the traffic from host one goes to host three directly. Okay, so this is a console, and on this console, I run script. This script create virtual terminals using VTN API. So it means that define register service function with VTN manager. To do that, I need to specify switch ID and port ID, port IDs of the service functions. So using these switch ID and port ID information, VTN manager knows to which port it the packets forwarded, packet packets will be forwarded. So here I create virtual terminals for for two service functions. like this, and these operations, so let me go back to the slide, and uh, so this script means this behavior, creating virtual terminals, which is associated with service functions. Okay, and uh, now we have virtual terminals for these two service functions. So now I'm ready to do service function chaining. I'm ready to define a service function chain. So first, uh, 
here I try to insert service function one to the traffic from host one to host three. So in this script, I specify the IP address of host one and host three. And this script re requires the number of service functions to insert to create to define to create a service function chain. And after that I enter the name of a service function. Actually this is this is I defined this is I defined on the previous script. Okay, now the configuration for service function chaining is done. So you can see suddenly the delay, the 200 milliseconds delay happened. The pin pack, the pin traffic from host one to host three. Host three. I'm opening now. I'm opening the console of host one. But. In the configuration for service function chaining, I ex explicitly specify the host one's IP address. So actually, this is not host one. This is, this is the console of host two, and this shows the pin packets from host two to host three. And this, in, in, in this communication, the 200 milliseconds delay is not inserted like this. So in this demo, I, I'm, I used the IP address as a classifier of a service function chaining. But actually, so VDN manager is using OpenFlow. So whatever available in OpenFlow, we can use as a matching condition like TCP port, UDP port, or ICMP code, ICMP type, whatever we can use as a classifier for the target traffic for the service function chaining. Yeah. So let's say it's host one and host two are clients. Yeah. Um, and I want a service chain uh, to go to the internet. Do I have to create a service chain for host one to go to yahoo.com and another service chain to go to google.com? Mm. Yeah, 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 you can do it. No. Yeah. Yeah, on, on, in this demo scenario, I'm just thinking the internal traffic of the data center. So in my script, in my, my script, script requires a source IP address and destination IP address. But within, in written API, you can just specify the, for example, source IP or just specify the destination IP address, and you can say to the uh, IP address of uh, yahoo.com or uh, like that. Yeah. Okay, I skipped this operation, but to know the port ID of these service functions, I checked the open daylight GUI. Or also I can get this information using rest of of open daylight. Yeah, I think open flow plugin or other application expose this information. Okay. Uh, so now VTN manager does not have uh, a capability to automatically find a service function, so I have to tell where is which to which port service function is connected. 
So, yeah, we can use REST API. Yeah, right now not in Lithium. This is not done via REST Conf, but. Uh, yeah, to do that, I think we need to change, we need to extend a plugin in OpenStack side. And the manager supports this new plugin. So, I, you know, so, and operator must, in OpenStack GUI, operator must specify this VM is a service, service function, like, and maybe, I think operator need to tell the OpenStack the service function type, like firewall or like that. And this information must be forwarded to within manager, like, like that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so this demonstration shows how, this demonstration really show the service function chaining, but not to be honest, not all part is done from OpenStack. Some, some configuration like creating virtual terminals and configure traffic redirection, these parts are configured by using directly calling VTN API. But other part, other basic part like creating a virtual bridge for virtual host on OpenStack, these part are completely integrated with OpenStack. Yeah. Okay, so at this point, I've already configured the service function chain, and uh, so on the VTN GUI, we can see how the traffic from host one go to go through host three. Actually, the packet from host one go to the service function VM instances. And after that, go to host three. So this blue line, blue line shows the end-to-end -end flow from host one to host three. And this is virtual network configuration of VTN GUI. And now virtual terminals are created for service functions. So these service, these virtual terminals was created when I executed the script. And you can, okay, so next I'm, conf, I configured for the second service function chain. So at the second service chain, uh, the target, target traffic is from host two to host three. And at this time, I inserted two service functions like this. Service one and service two. And now I opened the console of host two, and as you can see, the delay from host two, host three, was the delay was 400 milliseconds because this traffic went through two service, function, two service functions which 
inserted two milli 200 milliseconds. So now only the traffic from host two to host three has having 400 delays in total. And also you can see how packet go through in in the view of a virtual network. So like this, the ho the packets from host two go through virtual the virtual terminals which are associated with service function one and after that the packet went through virtual terminals which are associated with service function two. Okay, so that's all for the demonstration. And uh, okay. So each service chain, you're adding service chains per client, per node. Right? So for each time you do that, that's adding a number of nodes across all of the whole flow system, right? Nodes. Is that what you're adding in the additional region for all the servers that are included as well as all actors? Yeah, but so to, the scale to, to million yeah, for example, to decrease the number of flow entries, yeah, we as we within feature use set idle timeout. So Yeah, in this implement, in the lithium implementation, the answer is yes. Yeah, but technically, open open flow controller can understand the whole network. So you know, the open flow controller distribute flows to other paths. Yeah, so I mean, there are many technique to decrease the number of flow entries. Ah, uh, you mean? Yeah, we can specify a uh, kind of a uh, range of IP address. Yeah, we can do it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and as I said, you can also use other net, other field like MAC address, TCP port, UDP port. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so even there are traffic from the same host. Yeah, so we can use TCP port, TCP source port, or UDP destination port, or ICMP code like that, so we can distinguish 
these traffic and apply different service chain. Can you tell me where to do the large pull now? Did you blow up the large seven? Uh, no, right now we are using OpenFlow, so. Any question? Uh, by default, VTN manager choose shortest pass by, uh, yeah, okay. But VTN manager also provides a way to change this policy. So, yeah, so, yeah, VTN manager provides other algorithm to choose the pass, not only shortest pass. So you can, for example, how to say, you, you can specify the weight to each link, yeah, like that, yeah. So can you show me how to install any code for customer that now is essentially the center packet with the code of the message block to install the code? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, could you say again? Uh, how Sorry. to say, so in this case, you just change the, this IP address field of this configuration. So this is a way right now.
Okay, that's all. Thank you for listening. Thank you. VTN um, will discover the, all the uh, physical uh, topologies in the data plane uh, using open flow uh, with LLDPs. Then uh, such uh, switching resource will be uh, logicalized in the SDN controller and then uh, open to the uh, users and application uh, to define and create the uh, abstracted logical networks. So in this uh, slide, uh, there are two VTNs are defined. And the first VTN uh, has a server A to server B uh, with uh, all one optimizer and firewall and load balancers. In the VTN2, uh, it was defined in server C to server D with DDoS uh, appliance and then firewalls. Then, uh, and you can see some several uh, VTN model uh, in this diagram uh, that in the next page uh, as defined. So this is a list of the VTN models uh, from the VTN uh, project. So first VTN, uh, which is a part of the network service, so today we have so many active projects in the open data, so it might be very difficult to find a VTM manager, but that is in the, uh, sit in the, the core uh, data uh, controllers. Then in this uh, lithium release, uh, VTM project work to the, the switch the, uh, from AD cell to the MD cell, and also uh, work with uh, OpenStack uh, Neutron, and then uh, OBS DB and an open flow uh, in the southbound protocols. And by working uh, together such component, it will provide the open flow based uh, service chain uh, use cases. Uh, it will be that demonstrated later in this presentation. Then uh, let me tell you more about the VTN. So first of all, so VTN uh, provides a, a multi-tenant and traffic isolation and, uh, and provides an abstraction of the physical networks. So first of all, the, so today uh, I would like to present the uh, OpenStack orchestrate uh, service chain. And my name is Suhun Yun from Menishi. Then I'm working for the VTN project in Open Daylight. Right? And hopefully so uh, everybody can learn something uh, from this session and then uh, we are open for the uh, other people to join this uh, VTM project and then also want to uh, work with uh, the project in open direct communities. Uh, in this uh, presentation, uh, there will be the two uh, parts. Uh, the first one is a, a virtual tenant network in open direct. So first of all, I would like to uh, provide the overview of the virtual tenant network uh, using the VTM models. Then uh, I would like to discuss the, how the uh, service chain will be uh, um, performed in the uh, open day, right, with the VTN. Then uh, integration with OpenStack will be presented. Then in the second uh, part of the, this session, uh, the, the tie sitting here will show you the more detail uh, with the demonstration, right? Then uh, let me start with uh, what the, uh, you know, virtual tenant network and then how it works with the service chain. So VTN project is, uh, uh, you know, uh, the first project when we established the open data communities uh, in two years ago. Then basically uh, it has a two component uh, in the, uh, one is a VTN manager, uh, which is a part of the uh, uh, open data uh, base controller. Then uh, it uh, enables a multi-tenancy in the network and also uh, provides the end-to-end -end, uh, pass controls. Then this VTN manager will talk with a VTN coordinator, uh, which is an application on top of the uh, S uh, open data controller. Then uh, VTN coordinator provides the uh, northbound API to the application. And also uh, it uh, maps the VTN model to the open data uh, um, APIs. And it also provides the control, the multiple uh, SDN controller capabilities. So VTN itself has uh, so many uh, rich functionality, but uh, today I would like to focus on the uh, service chain and an open stack part. Then if you are interested in more about the VTN, uh, all the information will be available in a uh, uh, VTN project in the uh, open data right week site. And then please uh, you know, uh, contact us uh, if you are interested in more detail. 
Then uh, many people already saw this uh, diagram from the uh, lithium release. And then uh, VTN project has been participated in, in from the first release, helium, uh, and then hydrogen, and then lithium. Then uh, you can see on the top side uh, in the network application, and VTN coordinator sit on the, uh, you know, the top layer uh, next to the open stack neutrons. Then uh, you can see the uh, VTN manager